हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम मोनिका सैनी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टूडे आई एम गोना टॉक अबाउट द मॉड्यूल डिस्पुटेड पैटर्निटी एंड डिफरेंट अप्रोचेस टू सॉल्व इट अंडर द फॉरेंसिक एंथ्रोपोलॉजी पेपर एट द एंड ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल यू विल बी एबल टू डिफाइन वॉट इज डिस्पुटेड पैटर्निटी एंड different approaches to solve disputed paternity when a child is born he or she carries the dna of both the parents both parents are equally responsible for the birth of the child the man who has contributed his sperm to his child is considered to be the biological father but there is another term called legal father a legal father is the one who is recognized as the father of the child by the law the legal father may not be the biological father of that child the paternity means legal fatherhood of that child and every child has a biological father but not legal father a legal father has the right to support the child financially and he also take cares of the child etc in many societies it has been found that child is born from unmarried parents in this case the biological father is not considered as the legal father even if the name is written in the birth certificate then also he is not the legal parent of the child he has to establish it with the help of law by recognition of parental process and by the court of law disputes in the paternity occur when the father claims that he is not the biological father of that child and refuse to take the responsibility of the child while the mother claims the man to be the biological father of her child according to the khaganwal the question of disputed paternity may arise in a number of cases and these cases include illegitimacy posthumous birth supposititious child nullity of marriage divorce inheritance of property guardianship and maintenance as we know that only a legitimate child can inherit the property in a case of lohi and radhika singh the supreme court states that if a man and woman who are unmarried and stay together for a long time and behave like a married couple then there is a presumption of a valid marriage and the child born will be legitimate and will have the right to inheritance and the right of succession under the section 357 of the general clauses act the definition of son includes an adopted son and under section 12 of the hindu adoption and maintenance act 1956 an adopted son or daughter is entitled to succeed to the state of his adoptive parents the disputed paternity can be solved through different approaches these approaches are morphological approach between the child and parent serological approach immunological approach through human leukocyte antigen typing and the last approach is dna typing or dna profile which include variable number tandem repeats or short tandem repeats and polymerase chain reaction now i will describe these approaches in detail the first is morphological approach between the child and the parent every trait is transferred from parents to children each parent contributes equally in the formation of zygote 
so it is normal that the child represent the character similar to its biological parents the dominant characters are expressed phenotypically the child resemble his or her parents many times in features like figure skin color nose form eyes stature hair and other personal details many times some deformities or developmental details are also seen in the child sometimes child represent the trait that their grandparents have as traits are inherited and transferred from one generation to another many disease are transformed from father to boy as y chromosome is inherited from father to son and many diseases are carried from mother to son as x chromosomes is transferred from mother to son in case of female child one x chromosome are transferred from mother to child and another x chromosome from father to child in female child many times genotype is not represented phenotypically that is morphologically as because they are carrier the presented diagram is also showing you the transfer of the physical and morphological features from the father and mother which is used in the sorting out the cases of disputed paternity the presented diagram is showing you the resemblance between the father and son in phenotypic or morphological features which is used in paternity dispute through the superimposition technique few mendelian traits like ear lobe tongue rolling etc also help in dispute paternity joint ear lobe is a dominant trait and attached ear lobe is a recessive trait in the case of rolling tongue which is a dominant trait while not rolling is a recessive trait the another example is of hypertrichosis the hypotrichosis pinnae oris is a y linked autosomal dominant trait in which the helix of the ear shows hair growth this trait is transformed from father to son as it is located on the y chromosome the next approach is serological approach which is one of the important criteria to identify the disputed paternity case abo blood group was discovered by lenstiner in 1900 the blood group of a person is identified with the antigen and antibody this antigen and antibody reaction helps in solving the dispute paternity case a b and o genes are located on the 9 chromosome the four basic abo phenotypes are o a b and ab sometimes blood grouping test can never affirmatively fix the paternity of a man but they may exonerate him to understand how this blood grouping helps in knowing that a man is not the father of the given child or father of the child it is necessary to understand the way in which blood groups are inherited 
during zygote formation haploid sperm cell and a haploid ovum fuses with each other if father has blood group ab then two types of sperm will be produced one that will carry a and the other that will carry b if the mother also have ab blood group then she will also produce two types of ovum one that will carry a and the other that will carry b the genotype of the child can be ab aa bb and ab so there is 50% chance of the child to have ab blood group and 25% chance for aa and bb blood group if the father has blood group b then the genotype of the father can be bb and bo if the father has genotype bb then all the sperms will carry b genes and if the genotype is bo then half sperm will carry b and the other half will carry o genes now if the mother also have b blood group then genotype can be bb and bo if the genotype is bb then all the ovum will carry b genes and if the genotype is bo then half of the ovum will be carrying b genes and the other half will carry o genes if one of the parents has blood group ab and other have blood group o then the child can have blood group a or b the present table is showing you the antigen and antibodies present in different blood group a blood group carries only a antigen b blood group carries only b antigen ab blood group carries both a and b antigen and o blood group carries no antigen again a blood blood group has anti b antibody in the plasma blood group b has anti a antibody blood group o has anti ab antibody and blood group ab has no antibody the factors that determine the blood blood group of the child are inherited from parents the present table is showing you the combination of the phenotype of blood group of parents and child if father and mother have the genotype bo and bo then it is possible that the child will have o blood group because the possible genotypes will be bb bo bo and oo if both the parents have blood group a then the possible genotype can be aa or ao and the child will have a blood group but if parents have genotype ao and ao then the child can have blood group a and o the next approach to study the disputed paternity is immunological approach through human leukocyte antigen typing this technique is also a kind of serological test which helps in determining paternity the human leukocyte was developed by dr paul terasaki who is the professor of surgery at the university of california at los angeles and he discovered this human leukocyte technique in 1964 he discovered this system to minimize the possibility of rejection of 
transplant organ. This system was first used in paternity studies in 1970s. The advantage of human leukocyte antigen over blood typing is that that all human leukocyte antigen types are relatively rare. If the accused man shares high percentage of combination of HLA types, then the man could be the father of that child. But high rates of exclusion are possible products of multiple testing, cost and diminishing returns that render the excessive multiple testing impractical. The human leukocyte antigen system is based upon the identification of antigen and substances that stimulate the antibody production when introduced into the another human body. The HLA test detects the antigens by using antisera or antibodies. It is known as a serological test as genes are inherited from the parents by making calculations on the basis of the antigens present on the surface of the white blood cells, the probability of the paternity is calculated. Two loci A and B are present in the HLA region of the chromosome and they are used to evaluate the percentage of paternity. This serological test is based on one of the two ways. One way is that that there may be exclusion that is the man is not the father of the child according to the principles of genetics and another may be inclusion. In that case the man can be the father of the child or may have similar genetic makeup. Now we will study the next approach of disputed paternity that is DNA typing. DNA is the deoxy ribonucleic acid which is the genetic material and inherited from both the parents. DNA is the ideal source for identification as it is unique in every individual. It shows the blueprint of an individual. It is a method for identification of individual used in forensic science. It also helps in the paternal analysis by taking the allele size for all microsatellite markers. This DNA typing technique was developed by Alec Jeffrey in 1987. The main function of DNA typing is personal identification and determination of paternity. Now, I will tell you the different type of techniques which are involved in DNA typing. The first technique is variable number tandem repeats. These variable number tandem repeats are short tandem sequences of 10 to 100 base pairs which are repeated. These regions vary from individual to individual in members. Each variant acts as an inherited allele allowing them to use as parcel identification and parental identification. It's almost impossible having equal variable number tandem repeats regions in two unrelated person. The multilocus DNA fingerprinting is one of the important tool in determining paternity because they provide great information, somatic stability and Mendelian inheritance. This illustration is showing you the variable number of tandem repeats that is extracted with restriction endonuclease enzymes at specific cutting sites. 
these variable number tandem repeats are 10 to 100 base pairs short tandem sequences and vary from individual to individuals in numbers the next technique which is involved in dna typing is short tandem repeats the short tandem repeats are short arrays of tandem repeated sequences of 2 to 6 base pair in length these are the polymorphic regions which vary from individual to individual these are widely used in forensic science since 1993 the short tandem repeats are dependent on the pcr that is polymerase chain reaction which confers much greater sensitivity on the test system this technique does not consume much time and it is used in forensic casework greater sensitivity allows the use of more convenient sample the relative reduction in discriminating power with respect to short tandem repeat profiling has a more profound effect in parentage testing where generally only one allele at each locus is informative then in identity testing where a match at both alleles is required this distinction means that a six locus short tandem repeat system such as the second generation multiplex has been designed which has an equivalent discriminating power in identity cases to four slps but many more short tandem repeats are required to provide equivalent paternity indices to the six slps currently used by the udl laboratory in the case of disputed paternity the presented diagram is showing you the short arrays of tandem repeat repeated sequences of 2 to 6 base pair in length these are the polymorphic region which vary from individual to individual in the presented diagram the man 1 is having the 5 repeats of short tandem repeats which is differentiated from the another man who is having 6 short tandem repeats and the third man is having the short tandem 7 short tandem repeats which is the basis of differentiation in different humans the next technique is the polymerase chain reaction which is also abbreviated as pcr this technique was discovered by the carrie mullis in 1983 it was established as a standard method for paternity testing the polymerase chain reaction helps in the multiplication of a specific region of dna strand many times it is the most accurate and fastest method for determining paternity as dna is inherited from parents to the child through polymerase chain reaction one can determine the closeness between two individuals or how closely they both are related with each other the two dna source is multiplied and seen whether one is derived from the other or if the two had similar percentage a child inherits a unique combination of deoxyribonucleic acid from its parents because scientists have extensively used polymerase chain reaction for dna testing a greater amount of information 
has been accumulated to form a database for accurate DNA analysis. According to the Khaganwal, this large database enables paternity testing via polymerase chain reaction to have the highest power of exclusion. According to the Chakravarti et al., three human microsatellites which are commonly typed by the polymerase chain reaction are APOP B, D17 S5, which are also known as D17 S30 and D1 S80. These markers can amplify easily and detect it after electrophoresis. Earlier, restriction fragment length polymerase is used in determining the paternity, but nowadays it is not used much as it requires large amount of DNA and takes a long time to process. Now, new methods like polymerase chain reactions are used. The display diagram is presenting you three different steps of polymerase chain reaction. In the first step, that is denaturing, the DNA is heated usually to 95 degree Celsius to render it. This is used to make it single stranded. The second step is annealing step which is followed by the denaturation step. In this technique, two primers bind the appropriate complementary strand and the last step in the polymerase chain reaction is the extension step. In the extension process, DNA polymerase extends the primer by its polymerase activity. This is done at a temperature optimal for the particular polymerase that is used. Earlier day, restriction fragment length polymerase was used, but nowadays it is not used as it requires large quantity of DNA. This polymerase chain reaction is one of the largely used technique as it consumes less quantity of DNA and it gives a confirmed result about the paternity test. So students, let us see what we have learned. The disputed paternity is when a man claims that he is not the biological father of the child and does not take the responsibility of the child. The biological father is the one who donate his sperm to the child whereas the legal father is the one who is recognized as the father of the child by the law. If a married couple has a child then the man is the legal father but if an unmarried couple has child then the father has to claim his paternity with the help of law by recognition of paternal process and by court of law. This is a newly introduced concept mainly found in the foreign countries where divorce and living together before marriage is very common. In many cases, paternity dispute should be solved regarding inheritance of property, legitimacy, divorce, etc. There are many ways in which the paternity disputes can be solved that are morphologically, serologically, human leukocyte antigen system and the DNA typing. In the morphological approach, 
similarity in the body figure nose form lips eyes are seen and compared with the parents in the second approach that is the serological approach blood groups are matched but blood groups cannot give conformity about the parental disputes in the third approach that is the human leukocyte antigen system based upon the identification of antigen and substances that stimulate the antibody production when introduced into the another human body the human leukocyte antigen regions are relatively rare dna typing is done by using many techniques like short tandem repeats variable number tandem repeats and polymerase chain reaction earlier day restriction fragment length polymerase was also used but nowadays it is not used as it required large quantity of dna the polymerase chain reaction or pcr is one of the largely used techniques as it consumes less time the dna typing it gives a confirmed result about the paternity test thank you